Hi everyone, I can see some participants um, joining the call. We're gonna give everybody a few more minutes. It looks like it's like 1029. Good morning, Toby. Toby's totally got the hang of the um, chat. If you're chatting, please make sure that you are um, addressing your comments to everyone, not just the panelists. Hey, Fred. Hey, Gabriella. Holly, good morning. Thanks, Colin. Colin is saying if you have any questions, you can put them in chat or in the Q&A tab. Good morning, Philip and Leo. Um, Philip, make sure you change yours to um, everyone so everyone can see your comments. I hear Scarlett. Scarlett is a CSR in the um, Client Success Department here at Infinity. She is helping us uh, monitor the chat today. So, um, Antonia, good morning. We are here uh, live in the Client Success Room at Infinity. Uh, you may be um, seeing some folks walking back and forth, things like that. So, we're coming to you from the um, the real place where all the action takes place uh, here at Infinity. And um, good morning, Fred and Scott and Ronald. Um, I'm Georgia Berry and I am the Client Success Supervisor. I've worked with some of you in the past um, and I'm so excited for you all to be here today so we can talk a little bit more uh, about the Infinity reporting. Um, one thing I do want to say is that um, I want to ask a couple questions just to get us started and I hope that you'll put your uh, put your answers in the chat and we'll go through and discuss these towards the end of the presentation. We'll have time for our Q&A so um, I'm excited to hear what questions you guys have and, and make sure that we're addressing the points that anyone really needs help with or wants to know more about. Um, one thing I'd like to know right now, if you want to, if you want to send in some answers is, do you use the I3 reporting and what's the most common report that you use um, and kind of how often are you running reports every day or every week or every month or every quarter. Um, so just tell us a little bit about how you use the I3 reports. And then be thinking about this question and we can, you know, you can throw your answer in anytime during the call, but um, towards the end, I'm gonna try to remember to ask it again, but um, for a live webinar like this that um, every client can join if they want to, and we can just talk about a topic and go into it in a little bit of depth and learn more. What are the topics, what are other topics besides reporting that you'd like to um, see us address through these client success webinars, so. Thank you. Oh, I see Elizabeth. Yep, use the BI assignment status advance every day. Um, Fred, what is an I3 report? Um, that would be just any of the reports that we have on I3 or Infinity, which is the name of the LMS. So um, great. A lot, I see a lot of people using the BI assignment detail um, and uh, BI assignment status. Those are definitely um my my go-to when we're when we're using infinity so let's jump in i'm going to share um i'm going to share my screen and we're going to look at a few things bear with me here for a minute while i remember remember how to share my screen i'll pull this across so um and let me go ahead and share this as well I think in the chat I can share a file. So let me see. Uh oh. Because it's currently in use. All right. Y'all bear with me. I'm going to close my notes. 
I'm going to put them in the chat. What I've done is I've uploaded a um, document which you can pull out of the chat. It's called Reporting Webinar and it's just my notes and kind of um, some screenshots and things that we're going to follow along with as we go through and you're welcome to use this um, however you like. And now I'm going to reopen this file so we can look at it together. Okay. Okay, so um, the first thing I wanted to start out with talking about a little bit is what are the BI reports? So um, the BI reporting is uh, it's, it's a term, business intelligence is what BI means, and it's a term that refers to the tools that are used to track and analyze data. Um, Microsoft Power BI is an industry leader BI reporting tool, and that's what we use um, to power our reports. So, and one thing I wanted to make sure that we talked about or mentioned is that over the last a um, couple of years, Vertical Alliance Group has made very heavy investments in the back end of Infinity. Uh, part of those include the BI reporting through Microsoft Power BI, but we have um, done other things in the Microsoft ecosystem as well. We are using um, their servers to um, to host our to host our site, and um, that really gives us a lot of uh, the reliability of Microsoft and kind of the power and security of Microsoft. So um, we're excited about these changes, and it opens up a lot of um, things we can do in the future to uh, kind of develop new features. Um, the Microsoft Power BI powers the assignment reports and the user reports. So um, the future of of the BI reports with Infinity, they're gonna allow us to create dashboards and visualizations of the Infinity data. We'll start out and look for look at a um, tiny example of that that we have right now. And we're looking forward to seeing those dashboards um, in the future. So um, thinking about it first to get started, like how do we find um, the reports in I3? So let's look at, my test site that I've got open. Um, can you guys see my screen? So this is a CSR um, test site, so Client Success Representative I3 training, and this site is something that the CSRs use to test assignments and we try out new features and things like that. So this is, um, again, this is our test site, so you may see things that <laughs> you know like they don't make any sense in here but that's okay we just use this to put in test users and test assignments so um, just bear with us because we want to have a live site that we could um, call up the reporting in so um let's see Let go back to this so how do I find the reports in I3? So there's a couple of places that you can find the reports. One is in the left-hand um, navigation menu for administrators. When you hit reports, you're gonna see um, the reports drop down here. Um, and you got a lot of choices. Everyone that says BI in front of it is gonna be a BI report. Um, another place that you're gonna find them is in the user profile. So um, right now, let's see if we've, um, let me show you in the user profile. So this is a sneak peek at our new user management, but you can also find it in our older version of the user profile. But um, let's just say I'm gonna go to any user. So uh, what we would do is come over here to our new reports tab and drop down and here's a selection of the reports from the user profile. These are all going to be pre-filtered to um, give you results for just this user. So it's the same reports we see over here on the left-hand navigation screen but here's BI assignment status and detail, for instance, BI assignment status and detail. But when we hit these reports, they're filtered, pre-filtered for just this particular user. Um, if you're not part of the early preview group for user management um, and you're still using the original uh, user interface uh, for the user profile, I'll just quickly show you that the place to find the reports in that case is you're gonna open the user profile. You're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom Right here it says user reports, you're going to hit view and you've got an option of two reports. So these are two fantastic reports, there's not a thing in the world wrong with these. Um, they're really great, you just hit view and they will load up for you. However, the um, new user management is going to give us these two reports as well as some additional options for us to choose from. So um, those are where we find the user reports. Let's take a look at our notes. 
Um, so a question you might ask, uh-oh, I don't know what's happening to my notes. Let's close it and open it up again. A question you might ask is how do I know what information, what report I need? So when, you, when you're looking at what report you need, because we've got a number of reports to choose from, the first thing you're going to ask is kind of um, what information do I need to pull? So for instance, if you're starting off and you're wanting to know about um, training assignments, here again, we have the word assignment. So um, anytime you're thinking of the word assignment and you're wanting to know about those details from Infinity, you're probably going to choose one of these reports that's got the word assignment in it. So um, do you need to know about current training assignments for your different user groups and whether people are completed or not? So those user group reports are going to be these BI assignment status reports. Um, the BI assignment status is going to give you one line for each assignment on the um, that you have out it's just going to tell you is the whole assignment complete or incomplete basically it's not going to give you any information about the individual pieces of content in it and it's going to show overdue or or current basically incomplete until every single thing in that assignment has been completed so one line for each assignment that's very easy and simple if you want to know about a certain video in a a training assignment, then you're going to look at the BI assignment detail report. That report breaks things down um, into the assignment, but each individual piece of content that's within that assignment. So um, it, in this report, you're only going to see that things are completed when every single the assignment is not complete until every single part of it is completed, but you can see the individual details about the completion of each individual piece of content in that assignment. Um, so for, uh, here's another one for assignments. Do you want to see every assignment that was completed yesterday or last week or for the last 30 days? For, so for any kind of set amount of time, do you want to see every assignment that was completed? So this BI assignment status complete is a special report that is designed to do just that. It is just going to show you everything that was completed and its default setting is um, for the last 24 hours. Um, this is an up to the minute report that's going to show you instantly the completed assignments. So this one is just a pre-filtered um, type of BI assignment report. So thinking about some reports that are not about assignments, maybe you want to know how many active users you have in I3 and when they were last active. You can go ahead and pull that BI user list report and you can get that information. There's a lot of great information on the BI user list. Um, if you use Infinity to track your licenses and you want to see, hey, what, what about um, in this user group, which are which people have got their licenses coming due in the next 30 days, pull the BI user license report. And if you were a um, if you were a client that was in our I2 system and you um, up updated your site into I3, you will have this BI legacy report offered. If you don't see this BI legacy report in your reports tab, um, that means that you know you started out in I3 and you've always been in I3. So don't be concerned. There's nothing wrong if you don't see this report. If you do see it there you can select this report and you can see um, some of your training history from I2. It's like the last 18 or 24 months of that um, history is available in this BI Legacy report. For you guys on the call that want to know more about the BI Legacy report or have questions about that, I encourage you to follow up with your CSR. Um, they can help you pull that report and I explain how it works. So I'm just checking to see if we have any new um, messages in the chat but it seems like everything is going well over there another type of report that you may be looking for that um, is um, a good one for us to talk about do you want to export a report about a certain user um, so here we're exporting reports about your system in general and that sees reports here they're going to be about um, the whole um, the whole site, your whole group of users, um, your user groups, all those types of things. But say you wanted to export a report about a certain user. Those are the user reports I was showing you. Did they complete their new hire training, for example? The fastest way to find that info is from our new reports tab in user management. Choose the report you want from the drop down, and it's pre filtered to show results only from that user. So those are the reports that I showed you earlier. And here's a screenshot to show that. So let's talk about how do I get the information I need from a report. 
we're going to start with um, talking about filtering and always starting with the date filter. So let's go ahead and go pull, let's pull a report. And um, we're, we're in our CSRI3 training. We're going to let our assignment status uh, report load up. And um, then we will we'll pull the report. Bear with me here for a moment while we um, let our report load up. I hope I'm not having a internet issue over here this morning. Let's review our BI user list for a second. Let me um, let's see if we can get that one to load. Um, give that one other one a minute to load. Hang on one second. So I, the BI user list report is a really, actually it's an awesome report that's got tons of great information in it. And um, I'm glad to be able to go over it with you a little bit on this call because I feel like sometimes people don't get all the information that they could get out of this report. Um, it's a pretty fantastic report. Um, up here in the top upper corner, we've got a tiny, tiny example of some things that we can do with the BI reports. So one thing that in the client success department that we do all the time is we figure out are our clients using the site well, are they getting a lot of use out of our site, and we always figure out um, for the last 90 days how many users have been active in the site. So knowing that we do this task a lot, um, the IT department put together a quick little um, BI feature up here that just says in the last 90 days, uh, we have 304 active users in our test site and um, 16 of those active users have, um, have done some activity in the site, okay? Um, and again, knowing that this is a test site and you guys may be uh, aiming for, hopefully aiming for much higher activity levels than that um, from your users. So we, we have people who um, are at 99, 98, 99, 100% um, activity uh, every quarter in Infinity. But again, this is our test environment. So we're not necessarily gonna see that. And quickly, it just computes that percentage for us right there. So we don't have to do any math. Um, this is a quick way for you to keep an eye on your users if this is something that, um, if this is something that uh, you guys care about um, monitoring. So um, what it's looking at is the total user activity. So um, we've got this column here that shows us last activity. We can click on the columns on any of these BI reports um, that have this little arrow on them and they'll sort themselves, right? So I've clicked on this to sort it for the uh, most recent. So what this activity column does is it tells us when the last time they took some action in the site. So it could be that they logged in or it could be that they started a video or completed an assignment, things like that. So um, this is where we can see the last time each one of these users um, took an action in your site. So um, I hope you'll get in there and take a look at the user list report um, based on this. Another thing that we can do over in the user list report just drop down in your user group filter and uh, it gives you some interesting information. So um, here's the user groups that we have in our test environment and we also have this group called all users and we've got 304 here 
we've got 304 total active users. That includes everybody in the site that's not been deactivated. So administrators, students, group admins, everyone, right? Um, so, but all users is an infinity uh, group that's in the background. So um, if you want to find out, for instance, about um, everybody who's in your company driver group, if you select that group, then what you're going to see is that over here on the filter, it tells us we've got eight people in that group. And now that we have the company driver group selected, what we can do, and I'm wanting to kind of illustrate something for us. So here's our, our user group column. I see here's all users and company driver. So we're gonna see everyone in the all users group because that's still selected. And remember I said that's a background group of infinity that has everyone in your site is in that group. But we also see people who are in the driver group. So this, this is a good way to illustrate um, how BI reports work. So in the column user group, it can only show one result per row. So because this user is in both the all users group and the company driver group, it's showing two lines. It's not a duplicated user. That user's not in our system twice. It's just that it's showing two lines on the report because of the two groups that they're in. So if this guy was in six different groups and I had all the groups selected over here, there'd be six lines showing us each line for the group that he's in. So here he is and it appears that he's duplicated on the report, but um, what I'm hoping to illustrate for you is that he's not really duplicated. It's just the way that the BI reports show that. So how to fix that? Well, one thing you might do is you might just uncheck the all users group and you say, I just want to see people who are in my company driver group. So now we've got it here and um, we could export that if we wanted to, um, or we can see that in the company driver group, we've had a lot of people with um, activity, but these folks right here, it doesn't look like they've ever logged into the site. So you can get in here and you can identify your people who've never logged in and reach out to them and say, hey, are you having a problem logging in? Um, have you not received your assignment notifications? Uh, do you need help with your username and password? Like what's going on? So these are some good ways to use this um, user list report. It's not just about uh, seeing, you know, how many users do I have? Another great thing to do with that report so we're going to go back to just our all users filter. As you can see, for instance, I want to see everyone who's an administrator in my site. Okay, so I can select a user role and now I've got everyone who's an administrator. And I can find out about the admins. Are they logging in and doing their job in Infinity that you've given them? Or does this person maybe not need to be an administrator anymore so I can go in and change their setting to a basic user? Things like that. So there's a lot of um, things under this user role that are really great to look at too. Let's go back um, and see. We'll just be patient and let our assignment status report load. So um, one thing that we, let's get started on our assi assignment status report. So I think where we left off was we were saying, how do I get the information I need from the report? And um, the information that we need from the report, the place to start is going to be with your date filter. So when this pulls up, this is pulling all, all the information for this um, start and end date that we have in the site. So the way the BI reports work is um, we have to give it something to, to filter. Otherwise, it's going to pull every piece of information that you have every time you load the report. And that's kind of putting unnecessary stress on the system. And you may maybe don't necessarily need to see that every time you load the report. Uh, maybe you just want to check on your most recent assignment. That's kind of the most common thing that people do when they pull the reports. Um, so what we have is we have a default filter and the default filter is that it's the first and last day of the current month. So when January comes, this default filter is going to automatically change to January 1st through January 31st. It's just, it's always going to change to the first and last day of the current month. Important thing to remember is this start and end date refers to the start and end date of your assignment. So um, we had someone the other day who was an admin and they were, they were saying my assignments are not pulling right. Well, it turned out that they'd made the end date of their assignment for December instead of being 
December 1st to, you know, the first day of December to the last day of December, they had pulled, made their end date be January 1st. So they needed to change the report so that their end date was 12-1, the start date of the assignment, to 1-1, the end date of the assignment, and then everything pulled correctly. So this start and end date is really important, and that's the place to start. Now, if you don't want to mess around with looking for the start and end dates of your assignments and you just want the, all the information to load up, it's possible to do that. When you hover over these, you'll see this little um, guy right here. It looks like an eraser to me and it says clear selection. So when you hit that button, it's going to give you the earliest end date and the latest, the earliest start date and the latest end date. And you can see right here this little spinny that means it's loading so it's loading all the information about my assignments from the beginning of time of my company with infinity um, so now i've got a full set of information um, to choose from here once i get this start end date filter sorted out then i'm going to start using these other filters to narrow down the information to what i need so for instance in here i might say you know what i want to see i only want to see um, I don't want to see future. I only want to see my overdue assignments. And so I'm going to check that and now it's going to think about it. Now it's going to spit out only things that are overdue. Um, and I might say, I want to see only my overdue assignments. I only want to see the company driver overdue assignments. So I'm hitting company driver for overdue assignments. So what I did here was, um, Unfortunately, I forgot to unselect all users. So I'm going to unselect all users because I really only need to know about the people in the company driver groups. And now it's giving me this set of, um, you know, I've narrowed it down. I could even narrow it down some more if I wanted to. I could say, okay, I only want to see about the um, 20, the second quarter 2020 safety meeting who is overdue on that. So I'm working my way through my filters. My, my start and end date is first, my assignment status, my user group, my assignment name. Then once I get it filtered to what the information that I want, what I can do is come over here to export the report. You're going to click anywhere in the data or on the scroll bar. You're going to hit this three little dots, which comes up when you do that. You're going to hit export data. I always choose summarized data, but you can choose this one, the default one as well, but I prefer the summarized data. And I'm just going to hit export. So what this is doing is it's thinking in the background and it's putting this information into an Excel spreadsheet for me. So I'm going to hit that and open it up. And now hit enable editing. And what we've got is an Excel spreadsheet with um, all of the information that we asked the BI report to put out for us. Um, one thing that you'll always see when you load these BI reports is that you've got these two lines up here at the top um, as CSRs. We're always just deleting these so we can kind of get at this without having to worry about it. But just to take a minute to explain what these are, these are part of a BI reporting exporting process. It just, it is what it is here with this. And um, it tells you what filters you applied. So it's actually kind of nice if you want, if you ever want to, you know, if you want to leave this part up here and you need to look at the report later, it will tell you like, what was I doing when I exported this report? Well, I was using overdue status for active users. I chose these groups and I chose this assignment. So that's what that is. So once we get these on here, now we've got our report. We can um, sort and filter any way we want to. And we can um, just also just use the power of Excel to do anything you need to with that report. So that's just a simple example of how to run um, an assignment uh, status report. Everything I've said about the filtering holds true for the other reports as well. So the BI assignment detail is just going to give us some additional filters um, to look at because when it loads up, it's also going to give us this content filter. We don't get the content filter on the BI assignment status report because it's, remember I said one line for each assignment just tells you the status. Is it complete, current, or overdue? That's it. In this case, what we're going to get is we are going to get um, one, for each assignment, we are going to have um, one line for each piece of content within that assignment. So for this test 
uh, person right here, then they have an assignment called Dan Baker PSOT. And um, here is each item within that Dan Baker. And we can see whether they've um, done any part of that assignment. So we would be able to see the completion date for the entire assignment if it was completed, the completion date for the content, how many, the score they got would show up here if that was um, something that was offered, the a number of attempts, um, the assignment certificate and the content certificate. So you click those links right from the report and they'll open up for you. However documents open on your computer is how that's gonna open. Those are, that's a function of your browser. Um, so if we wanted to search for a particular piece of content and you said, oh my gosh, I need to know, um, I need to know everybody that has um, completed the Bloodborne Pathogens uh, OSHA update. So you could um, clear your filter. And then for all time, you could have anyone who um, completed the Bloodborne Pathogens OSHA update or whatever piece of content that you wanted. So that can be a super useful um, an audit or when you're looking at annual required training or quarterly required training for your users. So as you can see, it's filtered down quite a bit in this report. So um, one question that we get a lot is my report is blank when I load it up. Um, when you load your report and your report is blank, typically it's because your start and end date fields need to be adjusted. So that's always the first place to start. If you don't remember anything else from this call, please remember that when you're loading your reports, your start and end date filter is always the first place you start. So usually when the report is blank and there should be information here, it's because your start and end date are set not um, at or outside the assignment dates that you're looking for. So your number one is you're always gonna adjust that assignment start and end date. Let's take a look and see um, if we've got a couple of uh, questions we can answer over here. How do I get a report by detail of how many videos were viewed and completed in 2021? I can get the assignments, but the system freezes when I attempt to get the details. Okay, so there's a limit to the number of lines that can be produced by an Excel report or a BI report. And that limit is not something that we can control. Those are functions of Excel or, um, or uh, BI. So what I would suggest is that you would load um, a smaller portion of time. So maybe you would do it one quarter at a time. So do your fourth quarter, your third quarter, your second quarter, or your first quarter. Um, if that is not working for you or if that's too much trouble, you and, and you are looking for a report that is um, maybe something really large or an unusual reporting request, especially for annual reports, we get this a lot, please reach out to your CSR and we can also have our IT team work in the background and pull that report for you. So um, I hope that helps. Anytime you're having trouble with reports and there's something you're trying to accomplish and you just, you're getting an error or you just can't figure out how to do it or you're not sure that you've pulled the correct information, always reach out to your CSR. Um, and if needed, and we have unique report ne reporting needs that are that are needed, we can always reach out to our technical productions or IT department and see if we can get those reports pulled for you. So I want to talk for a second about um, another question. So I'm just kind of working my way down um, this list of things that we talked about, right? Um, I want to skip ahead to is the report up to date while we're looking at this. So the BI assignment status and detail reports refresh every 30 minutes. If you need up to the minute assignment reports, you can always go to the BI user reports. They are instantly refreshed um, or the BI status BI assignment status complete report. That's one of the things that we use that report for. They are instantly refreshed. Um, but the BI assignment status and detail are the ones that refresh every 30 minutes. And I want to show you right down here in the corner is this is where you're going to see the date and timestamp on those reports. That is the last, um, this, so this report, this information I'm pulling is current as of 1030 
um, a.m. These are always Central Time, Central Standard Time um, on 1228. So please take note of that date and time stamp. So say you pull a report that doesn't have a date and time stamp and you're wondering when was this report refreshed? How old is this information? Um, if there's no date and time stamp, that means that this report is an up to the minute report. So in the BI, um, all the user reports from the user profile, there's not going to be any date and time stamp, just like this one that I'm showing you, no date and time stamp. User list, user license, um, all those um, are up to the minute reports. So we've got the assignment status report complete, the BI assignment status report complete pulled up. Let's take just a second to look at this one because the filters are a little different. In our other reports, we have some simplified filtering up here at the top that um, kind of lets us just get straight to the point. Um, in some reports in Infinity, we have only the advanced filtering. And some of you I see in the comments like to use the um, BI assignment status advanced um, reports. If you are a Power BI user um, in other parts of your work, um, you may feel more comfortable with these uh, reports like uh, these filters like these relative filters show items when the value is in the last two days like that's the default setting for this one. Um, we do have the advanced filtering available so ask your CSR if you'd like to have that enabled. I do want to stress though that you're not going to get any different information with these filters. It's the same information. We've just made the filters be a little easier to use um, on the BI assignment status and detail. So in this report, if you like to get more than what's just completed in the last two days, and you can see this is one of those cases where I loaded my report and it's blank. Like there's nothing wrong. It's just that in this site, nobody has completed any training in the last two days. It's just nothing to pull. So I might come over here and open up this filter and I might say, okay, I want to know who completed in the last two months then. And I have to hit apply filter. And now it's giving me um, who's completed in the last two months. And again, in our test site, we're not seeing a lot of completions because um, we are typically testing for other things in the site, but I'd be able to pull their assignment certificates. I can even come over here and say, I want to see who's completed in the last two years. Right, so then I'm getting a lot um, more data that's pulling and all of our export options and everything are going to be the same, just like in any BI report. You hover over the data or click within the data, the three little dots, hit export data, hit and then export it and um, you'll get that information popping up. Um, so why are the assignments duplicated on the report? This is a question that we get a lot. I hope that we illustrated with the BI user list report that um, the filter that is for the user group, if you have a user in more than one group, it's going to give you a line on the report for each group that they're in. So if you have a user that's in Bill Jones, it's in Billy James, and it's in Company Driver, um, and you've got, then that user has an assignment that's going to show up on your report. You're going to get three lines for that user. It doesn't mean that the user's got the assignment three times. They don't. They only have the assignment one time, but he's, you're going to get a line for Bill Jones group. You're going to get a line for the Billy James group, and you're going to get a line for the company driver group. Again, this is part of how BI reports work because it's giving you the information for the user groups you've selected. So um, how to fix that? Um, the real solution is only select the groups you need for reporting. So if you've got um, groups in your bill, a uh, driver that's in your Bill Jones group and he's also in your company driver group, but you just need to send a report to Bill Jones, you don't need to select company driver because um, you're going to get the guy's results through the Bill Jones group. So basically unselect any, report, any groups that you don't need um, for your reporting. So unselect the all users because we know they're in all users. Um, unselect company driver, you'll just end up with your Bill Jones group and you'll be able to send Bill the report on his drivers. If you have questions about this specifically, make sure again and check with your CSR um, and they can help you identify the correct settings for getting the report the way you want it. The other thing you can do is you can just ignore those duplicated lines. You can just say, okay, I know that this guy only has the assignment one time. It's the same information on each line except for the group name. So um, that might be another alternative if you're unable to um, deselect the multiple groups for a various reason. 
Um, the other reason why sometimes we get that question is in the assignment detail report. In the assignment detail report, there's going to be one line on the report for each piece of content, and sometimes people think that this means they've got the assignment many times. They don't. They only have the assignment once, but we're seeing um, many pieces of content uh, for that assignment. So um, these are some, this is a question that we get pretty frequently. Is the report up to date? How do I export? We reviewed that. Um, and here's some screenshots to help you. So I hope you'll get in the chat and download this file. Um, some instructions and screenshots to help you with that exporting process. Um, then, you know, we've looked over quite a few of the reports on this call. I do want to just pop back over to user management right quick. Um, again, I hope that uh, you, if you don't have access to user management now, this is a new feature um, that is going to be put out to our whole um, client base uh, in the new year. And it's something we are super, super excited about. So this is a quick little preview for you if you don't already have access to the user management. Um, but coming over here to the reports tab, and um, when you drop down, um, you're going to be able to have a selection here of all different kind of reports to view. So let's look at those right quick. Let me just go back and find, I know I have, I'm looking for my own test user in here because I believe I'm going to be able to pull some um, results from this report. So um, these are an example of the existing kinds of reports that we have. When we pull this, this just shows every single piece of content I've ever completed um, within the site. And this will show even if the assignment is um, if the assignment's been deactivated or I'm no longer in the user group, if I've completed it ever, it's going to show up on here. So that's a great report for your users. Some of these reports, if you're not using them, the user history report is also available in the, um, the standard user profile that we have now. It's not a new report, but it's a great report. It shows every time I log in, every time I change my password. Uh, it shows all the, um, everything that I do in the site, every time I take a, in, every time I take a test, and we can scroll across and there's lots of other great information on here too. It can show the IP address where I'm logging in. It can show the operating system version, browser and browser version that I'm using. So um, this can really help you troubleshoot with your users and that helps us troubleshoot with, with the people that call in to see if they need some help. Um, with getting logged in or with their device, making sure our app is up to date, things like that. So this report is really great. Um, you can also export this. Let's, oh, we're in this report right here. Um, let's just quickly look at one more report in the user profile. So like I said, this is going to load up and this is going to be pre-filtered for each user. We're just going to give it a second to load. But it's got all the same rules as our regular assignment detail report. There's no difference in our regular assignment detail report and this report, except for it's pre-filtered for the user. So again, our start and end date is going to be um, preset at the first and last of the current month. So when we load up, if we're not getting the information we're looking for, then we will need to um, extend the um, start and end date to pull in more information. So right here, it's just giving me a little bit and say, hey, I want to know more. I know there's more. And I can go back here and say, I'm going to go back to the beginning of that quarter. And now it's thinking again, and it's going to spit out whatever more information that we need. Um, so we've looked at uh, reports that you can get to from the left-hand report menu. We've looked at reports that you can access um, through the existing user profile or our new um, improved user management user profile, which is again available to some clients now but coming for everyone in uh, the beginning of 2022. We're super excited about this. So here's some of my older uh, training has popped up in here. Um, and so I want to just talk for a second about um, again 
uh, the returning just to the concept of the BI reports and our reporting in general and future of the BI reports. So um, one thing that I wanted to talk about is that BI reports do power the infinity business review. So we do quarterly or other kind of periodic um, business reviews with clients and we use a special report. Um, I've just taken a screenshot of one here for us to look at, but um, this report shows us uh, it kind of for the last 90 days, and so it's showing us the dates down here that um, for the dates that I pulled the report, it's just giving us some um, um, quick data analysis. So it's showing how many users had activity, how many active users we had, um, our uh, number of content items completed, our number of items that are still current and overdue, our assignments and our completed assignments. And then it's showing us a visualization of that there. Uh, this is one of the things that the BI reports do really well is create these visualizations. So once now that we've got our BI reports um, put in the site and in so many different ways that we can get that information from an Excel spreadsheet, which we know is so important for, um, for our records, for uh, making sure that people are up to date, for giving out to our terminal managers and employees to follow up with their employees, for anything we might pull in litigation. Um, one thing we didn't mention is that our um, reports are useful in any kind of a uh, situation where you're getting audited or you're in litigation. These report, this reporting has a third party verified time and date um, stamp that there's nothing you or I can do to change that information once something you know is marked complete in here it is um, we can't um, update or change those dates so these reports are admissible in court uh, that's part of the power of the infinity reporting nothing has changed about that it's always been that way we're super proud of our reports and um, how useful they are to your insurance team or your um, your legal department or anything when you're doing an audit However, um, these new reports are more, these, these dashboards that we're going to be creating with these reports in the future, they're more for visualizing and seeing at a glance like how um, your training program is working. So this screenshot again is a screenshot of our um, Infinity Business Review that we have been doing with clients. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw up um, I think I've got a poll here about it. So I'm gonna throw up a poll. I hope you guys can see it. Um, one thing is, would you like to set up an Infinity Business Review? So this is something that your CSR can do um, with you. So sometime in the first quarter, if you'd be interested in doing a business review, if you haven't already done one, if you have done one, if you'd like to revisit that information again, um, what they can do is just kind of go over with you, your site as a whole. Um, in the business review, we also um, can show you some information about your um, CSA scores and how they, you know, we get this information from the um, FMCSA and kind of how they've uh, gone up and down as, as your training program has focused on different things. Um, so in the future, we hope that we'll be able to place dashboards. Our plans are to place dashboards in different places of the site that are not going to be identical to this, but they're going to have features like this. So um, we'd love for you to be able to take advantage of talking with your CSR about um, the business review, seeing how your site is doing at a whole, and kind of getting um, you an idea of what uh, we're going to be working towards in the future with our BI reporting. And it is the Microsoft Power BI system that's going to allow us to put that in place. So thank you. I see that quite a few people have um, jumped in and done the poll. I'm just going to leave that open for a few more minutes. And I'd love to um, take some questions. So Scarlett, I see that there's a lot of information um, going back and forth in the chat, but do you want to shout out um, some questions that we need to be looking at? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, just wanna make sure. Um, I noticed that um, Dennis said that he noticed the filter criteria is now the end of the report versus the first line of the Excel report. Okay, so I think I saw that. So what, let's see, let's go back here. 
So there was an update to the BI reports, and sometimes this happens because, again, we're using the Microsoft Power BI um, plugin, and the, their, their system kind of controls the way that it works. So um, originally, we did have it set so that it is the start and end date of the um, assignment. What I think it is now is it's actually the latest, the earliest start date and the latest start date. Um, it's more important for us to think of it, though, for almost every situation if you think of it as the start and end date of the assignment that's what's going to work for you to get the information that you need um, but Dennis um, maybe you could clarify in the comment if that didn't answer your question Will the notes for this presentation be available or sent over to participants? So, Dennis, if you're talking about the notes that um, um, I was showing right here, I actually put that out in the, let's see, and I believe Scarlett put it out. So, let's see if we can grab it again and just throw it on there. And we can also, a replay will go out to, oh, currently in use, it says, hang on, bear with me, Dennis. A replay of the webinar is going to go out. Um, there'll be a replay link when it's done, and we will also send out an email from Infinity with the notes. Um, okay, the filter changed. Uh, did that answer your question, Dennis? Um, we'll also be sending out a copy of this document, um, and hopefully it'll be, you know, useful to you for uh, future reference. I want to go back up in the um, chat and see what everyone was saying because I saw a lot of things about what everyone was saying about when they use it. So, BI assignment detail, BI assignment status, detail twice a month, um, status and detail. Does anybody have any questions um, that you want to put in the chat that are questions that you still have, maybe even specific scenarios that you might need help um, figuring out a way to run that report uh, while we're still on the call? And I would also ask Scarlett, do you, can you think of anything that we should mention um, before we Uh, before we end the call. Um, one thing I just wanted to make sure was the um, the future capability. Oh, great, I'm glad you mentioned that. So, um, future assignments. Let's see if we can right quick have it grab a BI assignment status report. Um, one of the assignments that we have uh, possibilities for statuses that we have now, oops, evidently. Um, I don't have any future. Let's see, because I need to clear this. So I didn't get my future to pull, obviously, because um, I had my mm, filter set to 1231. So um, that was there wasn't anything that's going to populate for 1231. That's only two days in the future. But what? So sometimes people might have assignments uh, set up out in the future for recurring training, like hazmat training or OSHA training, sexual harassment, things like that. And you might want to see, you know, who has these assignments set up um, and who doesn't, uh, things like that. So now what you're going to need to do, because of the nature of future assignment, you've got to clear this filter so it's going out into the future. And then right here, you can drop down in your assignment status. And we should have a future to choose from. Y'all you know, just bear with me. I'm sorry. Um, somebody in the chat had said they've experienced when we're on video calls that sometimes it takes a while for them to load. And I think it is just kind of using my computer's resources. So just bear with me here for a minute. So here we go. We've got some choices here. So now we see future where we didn't see future before. Just check that future box and let's let this load up. Now, these future assignments are not going to be visible to the user in their classroom. They don't show up in the classroom at all until the start date arrives, right? So, a future assignment is going to be anything with a start date that is tomorrow or later. Um, so, we're not going to see anything with a start date that's 1228 or earlier on this assignment. but we're pretty excited at being able to pull the future assignments 
um, on here now because it's a great feature of Infinity to be able to set up assignments with a future start date that you don't need to worry about them anymore. They just go, you know, off into the future. They just start whenever you tell it to start. Um, it's 2021, he says. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Um, Dennis and, oh, that's Dave. Um, so you guys on the uh, chat, if you were thinking of um, different topics for future client success webinars, um, will you just put a few of your um, thoughts in the chat? One thing that I had thought of was um, a webinar all about, you know, assignments, everything you ever want to know about assignments. Um, we definitely could have a webinar um, covering user management when we do have the user management go out for everyone. Um, we some another topic I had thought of was um, how to set up entry level driver training um, in Infinity, as that's going to be coming out um, in February. So you guys might want to know more details about how to actually set up those assignments and, and enable that enroll in that process with us. Um, different kinds of things like that. So if you guys can think of any topics. Uh, overall topics that you'd like to have, um, please just put that in the chat or let your CSR know. Um, I've already received quite a few in, um, in the chat regarding notification questions, such okay. as um, frequency and then just um, how to set it up within the assignment. So, so that's a great, um, maybe a topic about infinity, uh, you know, a short webinar about infinity notifications might be a great one um, for a future webinar. And I don't know why, I guess I've given this too much, um, too much date range for it to want to load. So I apologize for that, y'all. I need to narrow down my dates a little bit, take my, take my own advice and narrow my dates down a little bit. But I do need to have um, some future, uh, some of the dates loading off into the future in order for the report to load to get future assignments, I guess I should say. Scarlett, do you agree, or is there anything you wanted to um, comment about that, about the future assignments? Let's see oh, no, can... that's it. Mm -hmm. um, just because um, I have a lot of recurring annual, and um, so we just like to, a lot of my people like to just double check to make sure everyone has it. Maybe it wasn't accidentally set up only once, but they have it recurring. That's absolutely true. So it may load better for us on a individual user instead of um, overall while we're on the call and things are slowing down. Um, so Dave said, should the start date be today for future assignments along with the date in the future for the end date? So the start date would need to be tomorrow for a future assignment as far as I understand it. Um, and the end date, of course, is going to have to be in the future because your end date can't be in the you know, it won't let you set up an end date in the past, obviously. You can't have an end date of today, you know, start an end date of today. Um, but the way I understand it for a future assignment, the start date needs to be tomorrow or later. Um, oh, Dennis has got um, some great suggestions for a future um, webinar, setting up an API, um, and some specifics about setting up assignments so we could have a webinar for everything you ever wanted to know about setting up assignments but was afraid to ask we could do that well um this future one is just not going to cooperate with me scarlet but um hopefully our discussion has helped people understand what um a future assignment is and how to find that on your report and uh, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Um, we will again have a webinar replay. We've posted the notes a second time and we'll, we'll be sending out those notes um, in a um, email follow-up probably um, tomorrow. Um, as you're coming up to the end of the year, it's uh, we just want to say how much we appreciate each and every one of you and hoping for a great um, year in 2022. We're so excited to see um, what changes um, come to infinity and improvements that uh, that we will work into the system and excited to see the ways that you guys um, use infinity so uh, thanks everyone so much and we'll be talking with you soon thanks dave i'm glad dave says he learned something new fred you are so welcome um you're welcome steve you guys thank you so much for joining the call Thanks, Toby, and Happy New Year.
it's great to see you guys popping up. Some of our um, some of our favorite admins are here on the call. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Thanks, everyone.